Hey everybody, Shaboy here, back from another video, and today I will be showing you how to use pathfinding in Roblox. So the first thing you're going to want to do, you want to click view, open up explorer and properties, and make sure you have your zombie. If you don't have one, you can go to home, click on the toolbox, and then you can probably find a zombie model by just searching for it, finding a zombie, and then taking out the scripts. For this, I'm going to use my own. So now we're going to want to make our script. So we're going to right click the zombie in Explorer. If you don't see it, you want to open up Workspace, right click the zombie, insert object, and then insert a script. Now that we have our script, we're going to start scripting. First, we're going to set our variables. So the local zombie equals script.parent. We're setting a variable for the zombie. So it goes from the script to the parent. We're going to set up some other variables that we need, like the humanoid and the humanoid root part. So local humanoid equals zombie, wait for child humanoid, wait for it to load in. Then local root equals zombie, wait for child humanoid root part. So the root part is just the center of the zombie. If your model doesn't have a humanoid root part, then you can either make it yourself or you can use the torso instead. Next, we're going to set our player service. So local players, let's game get service players. We need this so we can get all the players in the server and chase them with the zombie. So local pathfinding service equals game get service pathfinding service. We're going to be using this for pathfinding. And now we're going to start making it chase players. So while task.wait do, this makes a loop. We have to put a wait so it doesn't crash. Now the max distance you want it to see I'm going to put 50 studs and then local temp equals nil. We'll be using this to store the closest one and we're going to be using it to find the closest player. So for I player in pairs players get players do. So what this does is it loops through all the players in the server and next we're going to get their characters. Local car which is just short for character equals player dot character. If character then because sometimes they don't have one. Local R equals car find first child humanoid root part. We need their root part. Or character find first child head. Basically the same thing. This will make it work for any character. For example, if you have a custom one, if it has a head, then it'll still follow them. And then local humanoid or human because we already have a humanoid variable. This character find first child, which is a humanoid. And now we need to check if it's alive because we don't want a zombie chasing a dead player. So if r and human and human.health is greater than zero, then now we're going to get the distance. So local distance equals r.position minus root.position.magnitude. This is how you get the distance between two locations. If distance is less than dist, then dist equals distance and then tip temp equals r. So what this will do is it'll find the closest player is it's looping through all of them and then comparing the distances and then setting the temp variable to their root part if they're closer than the current one. If you want the distance to be infinite then you can use math.huge instead of a number but for this I'm going to use 50. Next we're going to want to make it pathfind towards them if there is a player in range. So if temp then now, if we don't want to waste pathfinding or cause lag if they're close to the player already. So if distance is less than, let's say, 5, then we'll just make it walk straight towards them. So move to r.position, or temp.position. So if the distance is less than 5, then it'll just walk straight towards them, because you don't really need to pathfind at that distance. But if it's a greater distance than 5, or equal to 5, then we're going to want to start doing our pathfinding. So local path equals pathfinding service compute equals pathfinding service create path. Now we're going to do path compute async. So root dot position, temp dot position. So what this will do is it'll compute the path, and then now we need to check if the path was successful or not, because they could be standing in a place that our zombie cannot get to. So if path dot status equals enum dot path status dot success then we will do our path stuff. We're going to get the waypoint, so local waypoints equals path get waypoints. And now we're going to save the original position that the player is at. Because if they move, we're going to want to update the path. 
So local OG pose, which means original position, equals temp dot position. We've saved it as a variable. And now for I point in pairs waypoints do. This is going to loop through all of the waypoints. If point dot action equals equals enum dot path waypoint action dot jump, then humanoid change state enum dot humanoid state on jumping. So if it needs to jump on the path, it'll jump. And next we're going we're going to move it to the point. So humanoid move to point dot position. Then local finished equals humanoid dot move to finished wait. So this is going to wait for the, this to finish. So we're going to wait for it to reach the position of the waypoint. And then this is a variable for it. So if not finished, which means that it didn't get there in time, then we will break the path because it is now stuck. We are also going to break the path if they get too far from the original position. So if temp, we also want to check if it exists. If it doesn't, then we'll also break that. If temp dot position minus original position dot magnitude is greater than let's say 10, then break that and it should reset it and go to the next path. Also, if you want your bot to be better at like moving around and stuff without stuttering or lagging, you want to put this at the start of your script. Root set network owner nil. It'll be able to chase me around. And as you can see, it was flying a bit. We can fix that too. So to fix the flying, we're going to want to wait for it to land before jumping again. So repeat task.wait until humanoid.flowmaterial does not equal enum.material.air. So what this is going to do is wait for it to be on ground. Because when this is not air, that means it's on a floor. And as you can see, it is now following the path correctly. You can see it going back a bit. That's because it's calculating a new path. So to fix that, if i equals equals 1, then continue. That'll make sure it skips the first waypoint because that's just where the zombie is at. So we will skip that. Next, we're going to want to make the zombie damage us if we don't already have that. So humanoid.touched function hit. So we're going to want to check if it was a player because we don't want our zombies hurting each other. So local h equals hit.parent find first child humanoid. Then local player equals players get player from character hit.parent. So if h and player and h.health is greater than 0, then h take damage 10. So this should work on its own if you want a cooldown on the damage, which would be suggested here because it's doing a lot. We just put a variable, so local debounce equals true. And then we just put and debounce. Then right after that, debounce equals false. And then task.wait, however long you want your cooldown to be. I'll put it as one second. Then debounce equals true. So the damage should be completed now. You can also lower this to make it calculate its path more. And that's how you make pathfinding in Roblox. Make sure to slap that like button and punch the subscribe button. Peace. Also make sure to check out my games in the description below.